Hello everybody and welcome back to the second part of this review of the Brockhampton album Ginger. This is the Headspace Podcast. My name is Holden Stefan Roy. This is the show where we go through the albums track by track, giving thoughts and experiences on every single song. And like I said, today the album in question is Brockhampton's new project, Ginger. And this is the second part of the review where we're going to talk about tracks 7 through 12. So if you missed the beginning and you want to catch the first part and get all up to speed, check in the corner or whatever in the top, it'll pop up and you can go ahead and watch part one of the review. Or if you want to stick through it, just go ahead and watch this and see if you dig it in the first place. We're going to just kind of go through it, give thoughts and opinions on every song. I acknowledge off the jump, I'm not really an expert by any means at this. I'm just a person who one day started to review albums. And here I am talking about this project today. And here you are watching this video. And then you can let me know what you think in the comments. And if you make that effort to leave a comment, I'll totally make an effort to answer you. And I look forward to reading what you have to say because... Honestly, the comment section has been a significant source of our growth throughout this journey of creating these reviews time after time. Um, anyway, I just kind of want to jump into it. Still got six more songs to talk about. And the first one on this second half of the review is going to be Dearly Departed. So if I understand correctly, this song is a bit of a response to the leaving of Amir Van from the group and just approaching maybe some of their feelings towards that. Now, I'll be honest, I read some crap on Genius and that kind of put that in my mind, but with a group like Brockhampton, the fan base usually makes sure stuff like this is kind of on point. And given the titles dearly departed and everything that's happened this year, it kind of makes sense. And if we look at the journey that we've been on through this project, it's been a lot of escapism, kind of trying to deal with these complicated emotions, this openness towards insecurity and the complicated feelings they they have going on but mixed in with this desire to grow so i guess as we get to the halfway point it kind of makes sense maybe to start touching on some of the deeper things that they're feeling if you look at it from like a, a personal journey point of view or just like the story of the project because something i remarked on in the first part of the review is how all these tracks just kind of like flow into each other sonically they're drastically different like everything comes in and it's a completely different experience with each member tending to go in a different direction but the way the literal tracks flow together is kind of like a mixtape vibe feel where you can just kind of play it beginning to end and it feels like one long experience so i think that's really cool and we get to like this more somber place here where like the beat and everything drops down into like it's like the opposite of hype like you're honestly meant to to sit and almost feel and almost just experience what's going on on this track it's like there's like some ah uh, kind of vocally shit i think going on inside of the beat as well um kevin abstract starts us off i pray i find you at the bottom of the hill i pray i make it out of texas i pray my ac come back on my mama's stuck outside her job my sister asked for alexis can jesus send us a message what's the point of having a best friend if you end up losing him whoa don't view my text messages whoa don't view my text messages so you look at that first part and it's like kevin's kind of looking back to his earlier days and some of the struggles almost the kind of stuff um you would share with your best friend and kind of just ending it with this like thought of what's the point of sharing all these things with somebody if you just kind of end up losing losing to this person you know like don't view my bad side only go on the ground to show you motherfuckers my best side who am i who am i who am i why i hide huh and that's another interesting point where you have the opportunity to mask all of the dark things inside of what you're feeling especially when you're going through something tumultuous like what i believe all the brockhampton members experience with this situation as it unfolded um and you know it probably has you questioning a lot of things especially when you you have this perception that you're forced to put out to the world apparently mary j blige was supposed to be on this project but just due to scheduling and whatnot it couldn't uh work out but then all alike i made a mill off a lie and i lie so i write another lie and i guess 
that's him kind of, I don't know, the genius annotation implies that this has to do with the fact that Amir's face is all over the saturation projects and he was such a pivotal point to it and maybe everything that was put out wasn't so truthful. And so in a sense, all of the lies that they put out or were put out that ended up creating profit is a complicated things. And then kind of dropping a pretense, no lies, but how me and my brother been traumatized and I must keep creating truths and hooks to get up out of this hell for myself, seashells. And that's an interesting point too, because um, I believe Kevin Abstract's album, I didn't actually listen to it, but he didn't seem to be very thrilled with it and made it. And what I read online is something he was saying how he just didn't feel like creating the album in the midst of it all. I know they scrapped two projects. I don't really know why. I don't know how much of this is actually out there. There's maybe theories, but I don't like to report on speculations if I can avoid it. And um, we get to this point where, you know, he's kind of pointing out that while they're going through all this, you know, now that they're bound by this contract i guess they literally have to keep producing albums due to their contractual obligation with i guess rca so in a sense he's got to work through it and create more music because he's got no choice which is such a fascinating like idea that like that ultimately this thing that you chase for so long it now almost enslaves you because of some contract that even when real life happens you're still bound by the obligations of what you've got to do and that that's got to be tough for somebody so young but honestly still pretty mature for him uh joba does a little uh, thing here he goes dearly departed look what you started i've been so heartless i try i try why 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 and it's almost like again you just feel his pain there and it, it must be like a painful thing to have to sit there and wonder why, why did this have to happen why did this go down the way it is um then there's a, a like a musical break where i guess you're just left to like think and just kind of absorb everything before matt champion does his verse where i like how he starts it big dog i feel like i don't got anybody on my side no more and then he goes on and really just describes like this i don't know vibe of like just this new way of living that he's kind of seen things like he got hurt by this situation and now this is how he perceives the world like it's hard to ignore it hard to enjoy it. where's my stamina in this life make sure my family tight more rubies on my neck and to catch me at night looking immaculate no one in sight standards of high expectations is low wake up sweating at night mind in the flight i don't get scared no more when i'm standing on the mountaintop i'm afraid of people dying anyway so you get like this sense where it's like this changed him and it's like he you almost get the jaded growing up feeling that's coming on and these different as people are moving up in their life he's moving into maybe some alcoholic more tendencies i, I mean i bring that up because my sister graduated now she racing lover through the days and whiskey in my hand bloody colored triggers wrapped around my wrist and you know like i like the fact that in spite of everything he's feeling throughout this verse he makes it a point multiple times to point out he looks good it's like the appearance is in place even though the feelings are not and maybe there's something to be said about the fact that people try so hard to keep this image in place like what they wear and whatnot so that you you just think everything's okay or you think it's all proper even if it's not and i find that fascinating because i find a lot of people who really do have things okay don't try quite as hard per se unless they're like top power positions and it's like economic incentive to do so anyway um keep your wits about you they stretch the truth longer than the nile eyes full of evil mouth full of vile they trace in your smile stay alert big dog only one life is offered to you and i think that's kind of touching into how the people that if you're not careful the people that are close to you will will turn on you and i suppose brockhampton had a very public version of what ends up being that song where you're talking about how your friends stabbed you in the back or, or weren't real or, or whatever it is but in this case kind of a lot of people know what's going on but what i thought was crazy was what comes to light in dom's verse um he goes you know how many sides to a story can there be when you saw it in your own eyes so obviously he's discovering something else about some personalized situation. And then, you know, when somebody throws you in that fire, how do you survive? I kicked down the door inside a home. I did it all just to save a friend's life. Little did I know the one who pulled the strings was once on my side. 
and uh, apparently some dude who hooked up dom when he went to texas uh was robbed or was attempted i don't know some robbery situation goes down and part of it was orchestrated by amir and he he like admits it later on you know um pass the weight off to your friends and never face the truth because you never learn how to be a man and it's not my fault and it's not my problem no sorry that's a little bit farther off but he ends up admitting it to him maybe that was just something i read in my research still he kind of looks at him and he's like no matter what happens like you actually did this and then um apparently amir has turned his life around and has found god and etc and then uh dom kind of makes it a little personal at the end and goes you could talk to god i don't want to hear motherfucker like great good for you but look what you did to us look at the situation that you left us in and i thought this was this was very heartfelt and very like passionate and it really got me intrigued and i, I really really enjoyed listening to it so i gave it a 4.5 on 5 Moving on, the next track is called I've Been Born Again. Man, I find it so impressive how they can evolve a beat from like the uh, uh, kind of part of just Kevin Abstract's beat to like by the time we're at the end, you know, it's just illustrious. Multiple more sounds have been added into it. The core of the track kind of remains the same so that there's a continuity to it. But it almost feels like this group is heavily inspired by the kind of the way progressive rock builds songs and i think that's truly remarkable for a, a group that's kind of like a weird hybrid hip-hop act um bareface starts us off and he's just truly defined hot on the deck like i'm wild for respect it's a three p c c bitch you in the d like i don't know it's not so much what he's saying i just think he sounds fucking fresh the way he starts it off like honestly Every time he's on a track, everything he says, he just sounds like the boss's dude in the group. Like, like he's fly. That's that's the feeling I get from him. Then uh, Kevin Astrap comes in with like a nice rap flow, kicking it proper. It's better if I try not to talk about the shit that's always on my mind. Money on my mind. A couple hundreds at a time. Try to fuck me behind, ducking down, hear me while we outside now. You know, and then I like that, right? It, in a literal wisdom point of view it is actually better to not talk about your financial situation for a plethora of reasons and so he's right when he says it's better to not talk about the shit that's on his mind especially if money's on his mind you know all the hundreds at a time and so he's kind of like flossing at you while pointing out that this is maybe not the smartest idea for him to be doing just from a conventional point and then just bragging whatever and then he's kind of got the sense of child fuck me i'll take you out i i just i really enjoy his verse it's got like a really really cool flow to it i like when he goes mama and the cell still good i'll teeth in my mouth still rapping about dick still and at least the house still move out my out still need my nephew out right here god gave me a good deal miss my little down like a big wheel uh, load that like a big wheel and i thought that was pretty cool because you just feel like the success like he's still keeping true to who he is what he does and i like the fact that i guess he leases a house i don't know if that's the right choice economically if you could but i guess at a certain point you, you can't always afford to buy a house but his net worth is 1.5 million dollars according to the internet now i don't know if that's all of brockhampton or just kevin abstract but if he's got 1.5 million, he could probably afford to put a down payment on a home and, and make more money. I, I don't really know if that's the point. But I like how he ends the verse with expressing for myself like I'm fucking Dennis Rodman. And then Merlin Wood comes in like I'm Dennis Rodman. Diamond dentures for my partner and them. Golden rubbers for my pocket. Ain't no answers. That's my partner and them. She's so bad I let her touch my butt. Merlin, what the fuck? And I thought that was funny because Dennis Rodman is an eccentric individual. And if you look at his career, he was heavily criticized for choosing to be who he wanted to be and expressing himself how he wanted if he wanted to wear makeup and a dress if he wanted to do this or that he did it and i bet dennis rodman has lived a more interesting life than most of us and i bet he sleeps real good at night knowing that he paved ways for many people to properly express themselves today so in a sense these guys are willing to try to like take that frontier and push it forward and then merlin woods expressing himself how he wants whereas you know in a sense this whole album has truly been the members of this group expressing themselves exactly how they feel fit to the point where merlin makes a weird line like she's so bad i let her touch my butt why because he's just doing what he wants here and then you know being a little self-aware merlin what the fuck i thought that was cute dom's little part is dope 
I don't have a lot to comment on it. It's just pretty dope. It sounds real right on the songs. Um, something I can mention is that in the music video, it seems like they're all filming it on the same camera. And they're like kind of passing it around in like this one shot styled video. Like some of them do it selfie style. Some of them just put it on the ground. And then other ones get down real low and whatnot. It's, it's a pretty nifty and creative way. Like they understand how to make the most out of creating really cool looking videos on virtually like no budget because most of the videos they make probably did not cost them a whole lot to make outside of editing and whatnot which i think is pretty cool um next up on the track is joba and he's got like this weird effect on his voice i'm totally cool with it. the more i think about effects on voice the more i think uh, a bunch of us old cats were just being haters because the truth is man people have been using effects forever like eminem puts it on when he does a demon voice so if eminem can pitch shift joba can do whatever the fuck he wants to his voice and i thought his, his thing was cool man um there's just some like something to the way where like he overuses words which i thought was pretty cool such as sugar yeah give me some give me don't i'm gonna smoke some i've been waiting for the smoke and smoking garden gnome shrooms you know just the way he flowed that i thought was really enjoyable to listen to overall he kind of puts it down like he's going in a little crazy and he's going hard and that's kind of what i took from his his verse but but anybody that can say something like i ain't tripping but cop or breaking dividends that the money stacks you copycats i ain't tripping but copy that so far is fine that's actually a, another allude to the fact that people are noticing your success and copying your style but he goes it's a rap keep my distance because you know he's not really gonna invest in that where's waldo but we win it i love that because he made a where's waldo line in the middle of the song freaking cool then Henok Sileshi, who happens to be the creative director of Brockhampton, couldn't clear a sample of a grandma talking in time for this album. He just couldn't get it to happen. So he recreated it. And that's what we have going on here, where you got to be ashamed with yourself and pray and all that other crap that's happening at this point. And I thought that was truly interesting that due to a sample clearance, they just they were that intuitive the ingenuity yeah, they used ingenuity to like just saw the problem move along make it happen instead of being like many others we just put it out and be lazy with it and then matt champions like send them out the door it ain't knocking no more for like the rest of the song as it, as it like ends and i feel like you're left with like this like another great experience on this project where you feel the tone of the album kind of shifting right so now in this you feel like almost more confidence has been brought in so now that they've dealt with i guess expressing what they had to say about amir they've moved on to the next phase where i think we're going to start to move towards maybe a different tone maybe i'm wrong i have listened to the whole project but we're just going to go discover it together as we move on to the title track ginger which is if you watched part one this is relevant which is more likely where they got the name from um yeah um this is one hell of a smooth song i don't even know how to like it just comes out of nowhere and it's just got this easy feeling and then kevin abstract comes over this like it's like it's got this heavy drums but like i just feel like it's a serene kind of ethereal beat and you know he's like i know you got your own shit and all of it together and know you got your own space right here forever baby and he more or less just kind of repeats a slight variations on that and it almost just feels like kevin just kind of reaching out letting whoever it is know like look i understand you're going through stuff it kind of almost implying i'm going through my own thing too but like regardless to what's happening there's this home base that we can connect at and it could be to the members of his group it could be to the significant people he cares about in his life but either way if you consider all of the stuff the the emotional trauma that has been carried over to this project it's almost like a release at this point where it's like you're allowed to feel that way and it's okay and you know it's gonna like kind of make it through better and i don't know i just thought it was so nice is the right word to describe this song at this point of the project it's so well placed um kevin's verse is a little short he goes hey stay sound when you're not around mood is always better when you're not around fucking up the weather when and you fucking up my town fucking up a sweater and i'm fucking up a gown and you get the sense maybe that 
this person that he's singing to it's a complicated thing maybe in the sense of a relationship or even somebody like amir or whatever you wish them the best and there's still some part of you that wants to connect but on the other hand you know it's just better now when they're not there anymore in the same way like i think kind of that way about all of my ex-girlfriends or maybe there's some sometimes when you have too much tension in the group you just gotta take some time away and escape for a quick minute just to you know absence makes the heart grow fonder and all of that good stuff but i thought it was just an interesting contrast to the content of the chorus or at least a twist where it's not so so much a close person but something with some distance and then even though he's going through stuff he's shining he's smiling you know look at how i'm wilder and i'm still broke you think i'm a joke i think i'm a joke i still think it ain't gonna work out leave that shit whoa so maybe at the end there's this clue at like as much as this relationship's complicated they're still trying to establish it working out maybe this person questions his ability to make it as a rapper maybe they're not making money yet and people question their success and this and that i don't really know but i know that he leaves it very open-ended and that was so fascinating to me matt champion comes in and does another soft serene verse like everybody's serene on this and he's just kind of like what did god make me for i don't love no more i don't trust no more i don't need the club some things are some my control i need some space i need to roll so i go blame my soul so i won't i never tried to let you go so deep and it feels like he's dissatisfied with the state of the different things he's done to escape in the last little while and simultaneously maybe there's somebody that has gained access to the inner workings of his mind in a way he wasn't anticipating and it is helping him realize there are other things out there than some of the things he used to do in his past and then when you say a line like i don't need the clubs no more it just feels like this person's growing up and, and coming into the next phase of their life and then kevin's chorus comes back in and then bareface you, I, but i couldn't hide you swear and you cry you see threat and violence they'll fall under mine perfect reason they will bring in a life always chasing a ride but you aren't mine and then he repeats that and it's just like man you picture like maybe this casual situation at least i do here where he's trying to connect with people and maybe it's a little turbulent and they argue a little bit and then it's just complicated but it never ends up being like what it's supposed to be in that situation with this little interlude at the end where dom is like i don't want to take this ride where like it kind of brings back in uh bareface going perfect reason my perfect reason and so maybe there's this like i mean when you think about the complicated side of love there's like a fear of going on this ride and all the bad stuff and i don't know in the way this song presents it nothing is stable and so maybe the different members have different appreciations for their willingness to engage in these kinds of relationships i think it's interesting how many perspectives get brought onto the song based on the different person singing it and i think it's just so interesting that the chorus sounds so encouraging while the rest of the song honestly sounds so disparaging and that's a really cool juxtaposition so on that note i'm giving this track a 4.5 for following suit on truly one of the best albums i've heard this year including iridescent which is out since whichever it is it's a good album too anyway three more tracks let's talk about big boy to do been in love with you don't know what to do still searching for the truth every which this is a cool track too and you feel like you feel more that transitionary feel like there's a, a seriousness to the music like you're, you're supposed to again i think be more on that pensive like this ain't no turn up track but at the same time if you look at the words i still remember writing words down trying to get them out of my mouth big boy you're a big boy now don't pout around me don't cry around me don't laugh around me you ain't shining like me you know and if you look at that as you get older the expectations start to change like you're not allowed to say everything and so writing words down maybe making the music is a way to vent out your frustration is a way to always be smiley and behave appropriately in the way that you're supposed to be and if you look at it don't pout don't cry don't laugh you ain't shining like that you know don't you're supposed to be the stoic manly figure i guess and i think that's an interesting chorus and plus i love the way it sounds it really is just like 
I still remember writing words down, trying to get them all out of my mouth. Big boy, you a big boy now. I don't know, it just flows so well to me. It's just really cool. Um, and then Kevin Abstract's like, if I had another, I'm a bad motherfucker. Got love from my mother, the city that protect me. I don't fuck with y'all like I used to, dog. But you could come around holding you still, baby. Oh, and that's an interesting thing to me because it shows this growth. Like, he can kind of, like, get what he wants out of the situation now, but he seems to like want different things he could just go out there maybe and fuck a next dude and have whatever he wants but even though he's protected and whatnot he seems to want a more mature thing but kind of also looks like if he's not seeking it out and something happens it's okay he'll just roll with it but he doesn't feel the same way towards his past which is a sure sign of maturity and it's fascinating but then it's Joba's verse where he basically keeps more or less the same flow the whole way. It's like, take my breath away, don't let me fade, may die before I wake, not the type to play, I'll take and take and take. Anyway, he just kind of goes on like that. And it, you feel like him questioning a lot, but like looking at more of the, the more vicious feelings he has as he just transitions into this desire to like get out you know one of my favorite parts is when he goes i take it and take and take i never want to change always want to change used to count my change everybody changed and i like the way he just kind of keeps on that change foot but makes it really work how like the confusion of never wanting change and always wanting change you know just that ah oh, frustration of not ever being satisfied used to be broke now everything is changed because he's not no more memories of the old days when i was young at heart matters that the heart rearranged reactions in my brain redefine my pain and it's just so poetic and it's really interesting to listen to his bridge follows suit and does it well and you really just feel from Joba this pouring out of his desire to like be better than he was and just understanding the phases of his life and whatnot and then bareface just kills it at the end what a day what a day i just had a dream that you took it all away blow smoke in the face i just hope your little world grow to be great again he repeats that a little bit we was riding in the dark you were putting up your legs girl i don't know maybe i should have stayed shut did i ruin your life baby even from day one if it was another life maybe you could still save us and i think here he's looking maybe at the consequences of some relationship he's had because i mean it seems like everyone's got a transition as you move into fame and touring and stuff perhaps he fucks somebody up and not on purpose it's, it's a huge fear of mine and relationships in my life that should the success and the fame come with all of my endeavors the end result is that it ruins the person i'm with in some way or another and i feel like he's just kind of expressing that and again it's, it's continuing on with the honest emotions we've been experiencing on this project and this is clearly another 4.5 to me it's a really fun track really well fun but like fun in the sense that it's really great to listen to and it really moves the album along in an awesome kind of way all right i have a lot more to say on this one so love me for life please stab you in the face keep a blade have a sex had two races i feel like this track again takes it into a different vibe like maybe it's just my imagination but if we go back to the emotions at the beginning of the album it's broken pain and like distrust and confusion and darkness and here it seems like we're in a, a more mature like i'm looking to find more real connections in my life you know and we see it right off the jump with kevin abstract what i gotta do keep it real with you stuck in some of my truth spending all my loot you know but even the the idea that here i can there's this active solution i can i can be truthful with you is that what it's gonna take like this idea is something more i guess evolved than what we were seeing a bit earlier on i don't know maybe i'm just reading too much into it but i really like it um it's another the the beat kind of like flows into um i don't know something a little different than what we heard before i don't 100 percent know how to describe it but it has a more upbeat vibe um i like when he's like uh taking my day slow taking my ray throw talking to angel speeding to pave though changing my page though looking like ace talking about spade are you afraid though and you know it almost seems like he's changed gears a bit and he, he's trying to reflect more and make smarter and wiser choices with how he spends his time and whatnot and i just thought it was really cool i thought it was like this is a different vibe than what we've gotten and i like the direction this album has progressed it's almost like you can maybe get to an everything's gonna be okay moment 
Um, then Joba has this more singy kind of tone to it, the way he sings out this this verse, and it's really beautiful, kind of almost like a part two to what we just got on the Big Boy song. And he goes, anyway, it's got to go. Disregard what I say. Grain of salt, sprinkle some over my shoulder. A and like everybody jumps in on the A, and it's fascinating, right? Because like if you are speaking some truth and it's really honest, you might become a little self-conscious and kind of get to that point. You're like you know what? Forget what I said. I gotta go. This is whatever. And then if you're super Superstitious, you throw salt over your shoulder because vampires, I believe, have to count it all or something. I don't know. Anyway, it's lucky strike with no filters. Don't push him. Okay, I was in, I was a fine line, I guess. I don't know if there's anything more to it. I guess he just likes harsh shit. I don't know. Sensitive, abrasive, stab you in the face, keep a blade, heaven sake, had to raise stakes, Dracula in a cave, I've been a lonely man, grab a stake, have a cape, it don't work no more, fly away, different ways, hit the liquor store, and it feels like he's emotionally in turmoil, and he, if you push him, if you tempt him, if you come at him in a bad way, you are risking some kind of consequence to that, and I don't know, he kind of isolated himself, and I felt like throughout the albums that I've heard, you have felt that he is one of the more isolated members of the group, feeling maybe even more anxious than others, um, and I just kind of like it, and then we get to the end of it, and he's a couple of stains in the gang, they've been hot, both haunting me, a lot to say, people hate wearing blindfolds, now where did I go, where did we go, how did we grow, how should I know, feel responsible, intolerable, displaced, insane. But again, even though he's expressing these feelings, they're still like, how do we grow? How should I know? Like, he doesn't have the answers. But the fact that they're moving into asking these kinds of questions is a super awesome thing to see. And then Merlin just fucking flips the tone, in my opinion, and makes it like cocky. Like, piss him off, piss him off, piss him off. Should have been set it up. I've made a, I just made a deposit CDG in my closets. Fuel ain't really made of fossils. Dirt on me, I'm finna blossom. Spying on your hoe from a SpaceX rocket. It's fucking great. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. He just kind of flosses for a little bit. And then Bareface ends us off with this like almost request to to have us love them for life. And it's an interesting request. It's almost like we're doing all of this to get to this point. And if you look at all the insecurity that's been described on the album, it's such a culmination to just be like, I wish you'd love me for life because that's kind of i think what everybody's looking for and what everybody wants is maybe not just even people but society or the systems they're integrated into people just want to be accepted and loved and not have to have that paranoia and worry that they'll be alone or betrayed or whatever they want to be loved for life and i thought it was super touching i again gave this track a 4.5 on 5 i mean this album has been extremely consistent and nothing has really disappointed me and there is one more and i'm not even gonna lie this shit caught me completely off guard so why don't we discuss the victor roberts track this kid in danger, tears and anger, Jim and I get violently police silence don't help anxiety. So apparently Victor Roberts the second, who is the rapper dude, uh, does the first verse. And I don't know if he's like a member of the group or just kind of a guest for this track. But essentially, Dom was uh, on his Xbox 360 playing Skate 1 and encountered Mr. Victor Roberts. And Mr. Victor Roberts told him this story that of his life and what he went through and dom basically provided him the opportunity to come and wrap this out over on this project so the beat kicks in and stuff and honestly right off the jump this track is just different in the kind of way where if there's like one song you should listen to off this project it might be this one just for how how i felt the story was so powerfully told so like my fucking power and just couldn't prevent protect me from that lapd kick through like right away you just picture you know he's a kid because he got a little fucking power rangers toys and you know something's happening and the lapd are kicking through the door and right away you're engaged like how could you not be a kid witnessing the police kicking through a door that's a story that's going to be on your heartstrings and you know it right off the jump motel pig pucks went through the living room straight to the bathroom looking for great dope so i believe this is and i might confuse the story i'm not 100 percent sure i have it straight but what i'm picturing now is the cops going through the place looking for dope my papa looking at my mama looking at that closet like did that shit go because they know where it is it's in the closet um 
it's two keys and a thumb for 10k with the mustard and so basically there's a whole bunch of drugs in that closet and these cops are about to seize it you know a whole family and no buster just don't add up and so his whole family's there but somebody's missing something's wrong his pot his father's facing three strikes so this would be his third offense he's going away for a real long time and his mom's high on crack and because she my mama just smacked the pipe crack smoke got crash tight this shit bad because the boys peeped a brillo pad and got some glass tucked um so brillo pads are a brand of steel wool that are used for cleaning and they're kind of in the basically to clean residue from the crack left on the pipe that it smoked out of but basically they're associated with crack i don't fully understand it but i don't know i was hoping the genius sanitation would give me some shit but they found i guess the crack paraphernalia so they know that somebody was smoking the shit and it's looking like my parents was up in here running off through that stash town but the fat cracked different than coke plus the smoke wasn't even close enough to choke me and I guess the situation is, is they come in and catch the parents here. They're the ones who are looking like it's caught. Um, crack's different than coke in the eyes of the law. Because when you smoke crack, for some reason, the law charges it differently. Even though I've learned recently from a few chemists that physiologically speaking, crack and coke don't really do anything different to the body. There might be a difference because like how you ingest it will make you perceive the feelings different but the shit that crack gets mixed with to make uh, coke gets mixed with to make crack doesn't actually have any physiological response on your body so essentially it's like doing coke you do it like if you really think about it people who do coke do it frequently and all night long people who do crack do it frequently and all night long like they're actually remarkably similar drugs but um, when your government's a little racist, they make some racist laws, and that's kind of how that worked out. Um, Lord screwed me so mom could kick big facts at bro. The truth is we had a bag for this kid we took in. Trying to part with his old ways, maybe we all mistook him. Something I knew was fuck when he said to open or look in here, Satchel. I'll be back for that in just a couple minutes. And how hours later, like looking like an hour later, what about cold food for a cold fool? So basically, this dude comes in and I guess links up with the parents and they store a bag here. And dude just takes off and motherfucker put his family in danger and he didn't really know what it was, so he doesn't even point in hiding it. He was very confused by the situation, but it was really just touching, like, but this. Uh, now I know as police you gotta do what you gotta do but this is my family all I got is us my my own mother just shot at us my this is why we're here and I don't fuck with I don't know but I had the heart to help this kid in danger tears and anger Gemini getting violent me the police silence don't help anxiety my daddy passing all of this wild and all of these pilots not wanting to fly and y'all flying I'm trying to dive in those duck popo stuck play your part you just get this tense moment of like the cops standing there and everybody's just kind of like you know they're just you don't know what's gonna happen and this kid's probably freaking out like don't take my parents away and whatever and then it flows in and he goes i ain't gonna see my parents for ages all this erosion no more protection shit don't feel safe what graduation what degrees what dissertation what imagination imagine my whole world taken from me all over some basic misconstructed melodies my heart racing clutching my red ranger pacing i can barely breathe mr policeman po policeman we got what we need just let him be and then I guess they, I don't know if he survived, the kid survives, or in the sense the parents get taken away, I don't really, it kind of sounds like they found whatever they were looking for, and they're whatever, not going to arrest them, but you just see this kid standing there, holding his Power Ranger, watching this whole situation where the cops break in, and they explain how some guy left it there, and you know, you're just praying that your parents aren't going to get arrested and taken away and fuck up your whole life like that. And I was just like, what did I just listen to? And it was a pleasure to go back and play this song a few times to really let it sink in. Like a lot of tracks on this album, this is the one I'm going to remember the most because that story is just so like, it's so specific and heartbreaking that, you know, it's got like an authenticity. And the fact that Dom let him come on and tell it to people and gave him this opportunity like that is just truly divine, truly amazing. Um, Ryan Beatty sings a bunch. Uh, thank God for all bitches sticking with me. Thank God when I talk, I know you listen to me. Thank God that I built for the distance. Thank God for me. Thank God for me. And, it, and then, you know, it's just like 
the album now kind of comes to its close and after that deep story another version of pain i guess in it working out is just showing faith to god and thanking god for everybody that's with them and for taking care of them and for finding value in himself and then bare face going and if you're hurt and love yourself with my heart use my empathy to heal yourself and then the album ends on this positive thank god for me note and you're just like that is that is one hell of an emotional journey brock hempton you you've done some seriously good work here and it's really beautiful this last track i find it like super intense like you're, you almost get goosebumps listening to it or i did i gave it a five on five it, it is an amazing an amazing song and that brings us to the end of his project um for the rockhampton ginger album i'm gonna give it a 4.59 on a five i don't know if i can call this album a classic per se because it's too new and to be honest classics require some timelessness to it but as far as albums i've listened to on this project it is one of the best albums anything above a 4.5 is like a classic by my standards that doesn't make it a classic that just means if i were to have a cutoff point anything i'm given above that would be shit i think is really fucking substantial really great work um like i said i guess throughout the whole thing and i guess this is just for those who cut to the end but this album has been like an emotional journey where you almost go through all sorts of anxiety and just honest emotions from a group of young folk who are dealing with stuff in a very open way and then the album starts off in maybe some darker places and as time goes on it's almost like you kind of work through some shit with brockhampton and left to a point where you find some confidence at the end and i thought it was just sweet the production changes on every single track giving you a unique and interesting experience to listen to and at the end of the day it's really cool the fact is not you don't get bored i didn't get bored listening to this album and i get bored listening to the last two albums and i think brockhampton is truly special so yeah that's all i got to say about this album and i would love to hear what you have to say in the comments of this video i look forward to reading what you write there and i'll make that effort to answer anything you want to say positive or negative um if you do like the video though feel free to hit that like button and feel free to hit the subscribe button to get more content on this channel as we look forward to popping up more reviews with all sorts of regularity anyway um yeah, special thanks to the patrons Ismail Kadamsi, Chris Prado, Jonathan Barnes, DJ Black, Hurricanes, Lindo Williams, and Coney Sparks. They're awesome. Support what we do. Help us get a new camera. Um, they get to tell us what albums to review, and they're going to be paying for our website soon. So they're freaking awesome. And as we move on to the next chapters of our lives, if you want to join the journey, you can support us over there, and that'll be hella fresh of you. Also, make music. You can check for that in the links to this video. And I look forward to catching y'all soon with something in uh, Dusty Clips if you're watching that video. Video is coming real soon.